Why don't you be seated, please? We are here today for the purpose of signing the Cancer Act of 1971. More people each year die of cancer in the United States than all the Americans who lost their lives in World War II. This shows us what is at stake. diagnosed with prostate cancer, the first doctor I saw told me that I needed to have surgery. And the second doctor that I saw suggested that I just watch it, called active surveillance. But it was the third doctor whose first question was, what is your diet? It changed everything. There's no question that 50% of cancers could be prevented in our world, and some estimate that the number is even higher. This doctor shared with me how my dietary habits and lifestyle habits could have significantly increased my chances of getting cancer. What our society really needs is a shift in our medical system. There needs to be much more of a focus on prevention and what we could call more of an integrative approach. So what integrative medicine really is, and this is a formalized field, is looking at all aspects of a person's life to try and ideally prevent disease in the first place. I didn't understand why this message wasn't out there, why men, younger men, weren't hearing that. And I realized when I look back and think of how I was eating in high school and college and what was being served in the lunchrooms, I, I, th I th thought this has to change. We've got to do something about that. How many of you are cancer survivors? or know someone who's gone through cancer? Look around. We can save lives right now because each day, right now, this today, 5,000 Americans will be diagnosed with cancer. 1,600 will die today. A Houston man has started a campaign to call attention to prostate cancer. Gabe Canales is a survivor. He's actually traveled from Texas to share his story with us. By the time I was 35 years old, I'd had 35 to 40,000 meals with hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, larvicides, highly processed. That's not even including the high salt, high fat, high sugar foods, also contributors to chronic health conditions and cancers. I think about all the things that I'd been putting on my body and I realized that that was not healthy at all. He started a nonprofit called the Blue Cure Foundation. I felt like it was really important to start a movement, the blue side of the women's pink movement, but the substance behind that movement is one of empowerment and educating men at a younger age what they can do to reduce their chances of ever getting prostate cancer. There's so much more that we can do right now, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate and empower young men decades before screenings start with what they can do. We are giving them the tools so that they can be proactive in their health and fight cancer before it starts. I remember my teammate Anthony was really moved by Blue Cure's message and he came to me with this idea of Blue Cure Basketball. Blue Cure Basketball started in 2012 in Houston, Texas and since then we've grown to many cities throughout the state of Texas and we see this growing nationally. We're developing similar programs in football, baseball, soccer, hockey. Sports is such a unique tool to deliver this message because at the foundation of every sport are habits. It's something that hasn't been done before where we have young men and boys play the sports that they love in different leagues and they hear that message. We want them to look at things in a different way and we want to set a trend within sports that can open their mind to a different way of healthy living that not only can build a base to, to make them a healthier person throughout their life, but also to make them a better athlete. 
As a coach, it, it makes me extremely happy to see that these kids actually aren't just here for basketball. They know that they're, they're changing their own lives as well as others. Whenever I have an opportunity to meet someone that's younger, that's looking up to me, um, I try and treat it like I was that kid again. Young men and boys look up to professional athletes. They're playing at such an elite level. They want to know what they did to get there. What did they eat? How did they train? What's their mentality? And so spreading the message through professional athletes, it makes an impact. We've partnered with professional athletes and we plan on partnering with more across the country to help spread the message. Being able to instill these values in these kids is so crucial because by the time they hit to their 20s, their mid-20s and their 30s, some of the times it may be too late. I'm encouraged that we've had quite a few professional athletes that have backed the Blue Cure Foundation. Dwayne Brown along with Chris Myers, Garrett Graham, Brooks Reed and Whitney Merciless have taken to social media to push the cause. Our Facebook and social media is an amazing platform that connects with people that are going through the journey, that answers questions, that provides education. At no other time in our war on cancer have we been able to do that. Ensuring that people get in contact with other people, having media websites, social media websites like Blue Cure has set up can be extremely useful for connecting people who are more isolated. And we know this is going to improve their quality of life and potentially their clinical outcomes. We need to move beyond awareness and we need to take action. We need to be proactive and not reactive. And that's what Blue Cure is all about. This is the opportunity. We must teach young men and boys about cancer prevention and risk reduction. If you believe that, then you believe in Blue Cure's mission.